Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Starting off with an idiot's guide to surviving a severe storm, from an Ohioan's point of view. Now listen to me here. I'm not about to talk about anybody who is mentally retarded. I'm not talking about anybody who is uh, unfortunate enough to be deathly ill and not have anybody taking care of them. I'm talking about everyone else. You know how you read these stories? A 50-year-old man froze today in his house after three days without electricity. He lived in the city of whatever. He's an idiot! He's proven Darwin correct! Listen to me. At some point, did he not think to himself, I don't know, maybe after day two? Oh, I'm freezing to death. Maybe I should... Call 911. Drive myself to the hospital and tell them that I have no heat. Should go to some kind of crisis center. Should go to the YMCA. Should go to the YWCA if you had to. Should possibly uh, go to the police station. That's the last place. I might just choose to freeze to death. Um, the police station. A fire department. The library. No, you sat in your home and froze to death. Because you are a golden ticket idiot! Um, and like I said, I'm not a Darwinist. I'm, let's face it, macro evolution does not happen. Micro, yes. Um, but the survival of the fittest thing, uh, he was on to something here. Um, don't be dumb. And uh, how do you survive something like this? Not everybody can afford to be a prepper. I don't know. I got a fireplace in the duplex that I rent. Now, I'm not allowed to use it because me using it violates the insurance of the landlady. However, if something horrible happened and hospitals and everything I just named wasn't an option, and I don't know under what condition all of that could fail at once, but it could, then I would void my rent, take the cover off my fireplace, and I would start a fire. I then would call two or three neighbors that I know, who I don't see smoke coming out of their chimney, and say, hey, can you bring over some food? If you can, I can stop you from freezing to death. People, use the thinking part of your brain. Now, I know most of you Usher fans, you Lady Gaga fans, you really don't have one, so I'm not speaking so much to you. But to everyone else, you know, the thinking people, how about some of those ideas? Shazam, Sparky! Maybe you shouldn't freeze to death. Um, other idiots. Um, Fukushima running out of space to store dirty water. Morningstar. Well, you know, I kind of feel bad for that because nobody could see this coming. Not me, Arnie Gunderson, Lauren Murray, um, some members of the Nuclear Energy Administration, critics in Japan, millions of people all over the world that have taken on protests against nuclear power, um, the hundreds of thousands of people in Tokyo that marched, none of them knew that you'd run out of place to put the contaminated water when you're trying to clean a meltdown slash melt through triple nuclear power plant disaster that is going to take a decade. How could you possibly run out of room to store water under those conditions? Japan's crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant is struggling to find space to store tens of thousands of tons of highly contaminated water it emerged today. Today? We've been speaking about this since March 11th, or uh, March 13th, 2011. We've been speaking of it in very loud, clear tones that this was going to happen. Emerge today. Operator Tokyo Electric Power has already chopped down trees to make room for more tanks and predicts the volume were more than triple within three years. Our land is limited and we could eventually run out of storage space. Okay. And you thought of this just recently, right? Look, maybe you're going to have to cut down some more trees. 
maybe you're gonna have to knock down your CEO's house, his mansion, so that you have room to store tanks. How about that? Seems like a good enough place to store the contaminated water to me. Um, what else do we have here? This is from the blog Huffington Post, um, who uh, I'm no fan of Ariana Huffington, but she's got some really good uh, things on her blog sometimes. This is from Dave Bendow. Framed Republicans who try to close down election competitors such as Gary Johnson. Now, I've been speaking about this forever. The Republican Party pushed the libertarian element of the Republican Party out and then when we left complained that we're not behind Romney. Well, we are libertarians. Romney is not a libertarian, so we are not going to vote for him just because he is in the party that cheated Ron Paul, who we liked. The Republican Party claims to believe in freedom. Boy, that's hard to read, but not really. Certainly not if that means being able to vote for someone who truly believes in liberty. Former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson, a Republican who cut spending while advocating legalization of marijuana, originally ran for the GOP presidential nomination and, of course, was squeezed out. I'm paraphrasing some of this for you. Um, now, this is what the Republicans have tried to do to him. I'm going to read this verbatim. GOP operatives were able to keep Gary Johnson off of the Michigan ballot after his campaign filed the relevant paperwork three minutes late. Do you remember that? It's going to come up in a minute. Remember those teachers you had that just kind of got a, got a stiffy from paddling children? Doesn't this kind of remind you of that? This isn't breaking the law, as my friend Tony used to say. It is breaking the essence of the law. Um, and it's, it's dirty. Um, in Pennsylvania, state Republican officials unsuccessfully challenged Johnson's petition campaign. As elsewhere, the major party duopoly requires its competitors to collect signatures to go before the voters. Um, I'm not, Ohio kind of sucks in many ways, but we have most of the candidates uh, almost always on our ballots here. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be the same this time as well. <clears throat> I, wonder, I, wonder if, um, I wonder if Rosie O'Donnell will be on it. Heh. All right, I'm digressing horrible, but guys, especially if you're in Michigan, make sure you vote for Gary Johnson, because as I just laid out, and like I said, go to the article, um, it is, there's mass cheating going on here, and there's no other way to put it, plain and simple. Um, I want to get through, zip through these next ones because I'm going a tad long. Also, Michigan people, you can write in Gary Johnson, and that will... End. How about this? I just thought of this. Um, even if you support uh, Romney, but eh, not really. You're going to vote for Romney or Obama, but eh, you're kind of on the fence. Do this. Even if you hate Gary Johnson, write in Gary Johnson if you live in Michigan just to let the system know and the GOP party know, hey, we're paying attention. Um, we're going to zip through these. I want to say real quick, this is brought to you by, the correct views, is brought to you by the Arcadia Grill in downtown Canton. Delicious food, um, service like that, uh, an entire wall of liquor, and uh, just a very classy, very good place. Reasonable prices, I uh, can't say enough good things about them especially in terms of the things that they do for charity in this town as well. So, Correct Views are brought to you by the Arcadia Grill, who may not always share the same views that I do. Um, Seattle police to roll out surveillance drones with infrared cameras. Department vows not to use unmanned craft randomly. Oh, you can trust them then. The Seattle Police Department plan to deploy unmanned surveillance drones over the city as it has become one of the first law enforcement agencies in the U.S. to be granted permission by the federal government to do so. Privacy and civil rights concerns have been raised by the move, prompting police to issue a draft operating policy manual that states, quote, The onboard cameras will be turned away from occupied structures to minimize inadvertent video or still images of uninvolved persons, end quote. So it's not against your Fourth Amendment as long as your chances of having your First Amendment rights are minimized. 
of course, your first, your Fourth Amendment rights would be perfectly intact and better than minimized if you didn't do it. Um, the manual also says all video and still images will be maintained in strict compliance with SPD policies and procedures. It also claims that under no circumstances will the drones be used for random surveillance. However, there have been other instances where that is exactly what has taken place. So, um, again, read the article. I, I get you started on the topics. But listen to me, people. I agree with Judge Lapolitano. The first person that shoots one of these things down is going to be a, uh, a, a, a hero to many. I'm going to say that with an asterisk because, again, we have a lot of Usher and Lady Gaga fans in the house. And I don't like the idea of them shooting in the air at a drone. Yo, man, yo, I got this. I got it. Yo, not a cap it. You're going to hit a plane. You're going to hit somebody's bedroom window. So I'm not endorsing doing it. But if someone does, you're going to be a hero. All right. Um, just don't be an idiot, people. And don't hurt people. Whatever you do, don't hurt other people. This is a, uh, it is a war that we can win by not being violent. Um, Academy of Pediatrics says organic food is not better for kids. I'm going to zip over this. This is so ridiculous. The American Academy of Pediatrics has officially weighed in on feeding children an organic diet just in time for a vote on Prop 37, a California GMO labeling initiative, uh, wanting you to know if you're having uh, pesticides and things like that in your food and wanting to know if they were created artificially. In the report, Organic Foods, Health and Environmental Advantages and Disadvantages, released Monday afternoon, the AAP admits that organic foods contain less pesticides, but the organization goes on to say current evidence does not support any meaningful nutritional benefits or defects from eating organic compared to conventionally grown foods. In a nutshell, I'm going to break it down to you into two parts. Admit, does the AAP, that organic foods contain less pesticides. Pesticides are toxic. But the organization says there isn't evidence to support that having less pesticides and poison in you is good. Well, we know for sure that it works for rats because when they fed them to rats, look up France, rats, Monsanto, and uh, you'll see the pictures. When they ate nothing but the food that we eat, they died of tumors. It's medical so maybe there is uh, 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 benefits to eating organic, but let me add this. The organic community is also in this because to charge as much as these people do makes it impossible for someone to actually eat organic, which is why I don't eat entirely organic. And uh, organic people are part of the problem here. Um, last thing I want to get to, and so are regulations, which again, you're watching a libertarian show, so I do know that. I'm going to get to this real quick. Why spanking in high school students is dangerous. Uh, this is from Live Science. You wouldn't expect me to say this, but I do agree with this study. Paddling your children should be done sparingly, if ever. And then, in my opinion, it should only be for things such as uh, violence. Letting them know that violence will be answered by violence isn't necessarily a bad lesson. This study would say that it is, but I don't think it is. However, I think paddling kids is a very bad idea under uh, most circumstances. And when it's not done by a parent or guardian, that it is absolutely detrimental. And it does not need to be in our schools. Um, and there were some sick people, and I'm going to name names, like Mr. Miller who uh, you could tell they had some kind of a weird, uh, I'm going to say almost touching on, uh, not erotic, but if there was something under erotic in terms of the sicko category, uh, these uh, both named Mr. Millers, they had it. Uh, they loved paddling. You, know, you got paddled for talking. You got paddling for being late. You got paddling for uh, complaining about your last paddling. It was some kind of sick thing in these people, and it does something to you. Now, I'm not saying I was sexually destroyed. No, I'm fine. But I will say that the paddling has made me more aggressive, and, uh, you know, I spent a lot of years in the old build-up self-esteem category, and I'm sure it was tied to this. 
In a seemingly counterintuitive move, the Texas school district has changed its policies to allow opposite gender faculty to paddle students after a controversy regarding high school girls paddled by a male vice principal. I'm not going to read uh, everything, but I do want to read the effects of spanking because it is mostly, mostly true. Because it would be unethical to random, well, they didn't paddle kids, they, uh, well, I'll read it. Because it would be unethical to randomly assign kids to lives where they were either spanked or not spanked, the experimental method, researchers turned to correlational studies to look for links between spanking and behavior. What did they find? Well, they found that spanking is linked to aggression, delinquency, mental health problems, and difficulty in parent-child relationships. All of that is true. Um, those of you that have watched the show recently know that my dad has passed on recently, and uh, it's, it's been hard because we were very close and I loved him very much. However, there were a couple spanking incidents that I'll, I'll you know, I remember forever. And uh, I don't spank your kids when it's not violent. How about that? Um, then he was a wonderful parent, by the way, before I get a bunch of bullshit in my comment line. Um, the correlations hold even after controlling for factors such as social economic status or how aggressive a child is to start with. Critics often argue that already aggressive children get spanked more. So look, my opinion, and what I'm pretty sure is more than an opinion, is a damn near medical fact. Don't paddle your kids all the damn time. And uh, where my opinion weighs in, make sure it is uh, not answering, uh, answering violence for violence. I'm in favor of that. You hit me, I'm going to knock your face off. But I'm not for hitting somebody because they were disrespectful to me. That's a hard one. I've never done it, though. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for listening. Uh, make sure you eat at the Arcadia Grill in downtown Canton. And good night. God bless. Please donate to me if you can, or advertise on here if you can, because that is what makes uh, things like this camera possible. Good night, friends. God bless.